Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Talking Otto Varlin. So he's got a win against a journeyman in Wyndham, United States. And I guess if you'd have said three or four years ago, post the Tyson Fury fight where he cut Fury, won a few rounds in that fight and came out of it looking um, like a decent heavyweight, he was validated as a result of that performance. And he's never capitalized. And if you'd have told him at the time, in four years time, you would have only had five fights and you'll be headlining a club show in Wyndham, United States. I think Otto Varin would have been going nuts saying, I need to fire my management. I need to fire my promoter because I should be in a much better place. And at the moment, even with this performance, eight rounds against Halloween Olguin, wins it 79-73, 80-72 on two cards. Otto Varlin is really in the middle of nowhere, looking for crumbs from other fighters, from A-side fighters. Otto Varlin is really waiting, watching, and not guaranteed a thing. And you look at this performance against Olguin where it was solid without being spectacular. He went in there, he did the rounds, you know, some nice work at times. You know, he tried to put the foot down in the final round. He overcame a cut in the sixth round that looked to be a little problematic, but good cut work in the corner basically rendered it a non-factor in the final couple of rounds. But he didn't go in there and look amazing. No one who was watching that fight, who follows the sport with any real sort of closeness, came out away from that going, Otto Varlin is being denied opportunities at the top. If you had have seen him for the first time and you didn't know who he was, I think you would have thought, oh, yeah, he's better than the other guy. But I don't think you would have thought he was one of the top heavyweights in the world. It wasn't that sort of performance. And maybe it wasn't meant to be. He's been out for nine months, a little bit of ring rust, perhaps. But this is the story of recent years. It's just been a slew of inactivity and a diet of journeymen. You know, since he fought Tyson Fury, just the five fights, Travis Kaufman, Dominic Brazil, Camille Sokolowski, Rydell Booker, Helamin Olguin, it's a diet of mediocrity in the scheme of things for a guy who claims to be a top 10 heavyweight. I think at this point, in my view, I mean, he's maybe somewhere around top 20, but are we just rating him on potential rather than results? Otto Varlin couldn't really put too much of a dent in Halloween Olguin, and he looked to be basically gassed after about the third round, fourth round of that fight. He did get a little bit of a second wind after he saw that cut open, and he uh, tried to put it on Varlin a little bit, but overall, solid without being spectacular. And there might be some people going, well, that could be good for his cause. Maybe people will look at him and go, well, this guy's credible. He maybe isn't going to do too much and maybe I can beat him. I mean, Otto Valin's sort of one of these guys that is similar to sort of Joseph Parker, actually. I think the performances, you know, Jack Massey versus Joseph Parker and this performance, Halloween Old Green uh, versus Otto Valin, when Parker and Valin are forced to make a fight, it doesn't lead to fireworks. It doesn't lead to hugely entertaining fights. Otto Valin never really looked like stopping Halloween Old Green. And for a guy who was, what, coming into that 9, 4, and 1, pretty lightly regarded overall, somewhat durable, and this was always going to go rounds, Otto Valin could knock the skin off a rice pudding. But it's still not a great outing when you don't put in a super dominant performance where you're just beating the guy up consistently. There were spots in that fight where Old Green was having some success landing on Valin, but it's a fight that's going to happen. But I didn't look at that and go, this guy is 100 or 200 places below Otto Valin in the world rankings. And you needed that. And I know there will probably be some, be some people making some excuses for Valin or inactivity. You know, he needs to be fighting better opposition to bring the best out of him. Well, why isn't he? Why hasn't he? And that's his problem. And the fact that he doesn't really have any fans, doesn't bring any money, doesn't really bring an entertaining style, is not an entertaining fighter for the most part. I mean, I think that's also part of the reason that we often forget why he's not getting bigger and better fights. He's kind to, he's going to be trying to finesse some of these fighters at a higher level. 
using his speed counter punching his you know decent boxing technique he's a good technician but he's really got a problem he's sitting waiting and watching demanding big fights i mean his manager in a press release delusional comments the other day that he's one of the most feared heavyweights in the division no one was looking at this old green fight going yeah man you're so feared i i can see the reason why you are a feared fighter it's the problem is he's you know for some fighters high risk low reward that's ultimately what it is what's otto valin bringing to the table i mean why isn't his promoter doing better for him as it is it looks like dimitri salita's um stable is b-sides for hire that if you wait long enough you eventually get a payday somewhere but in the meantime you're not going to do much you're not really going to fight anyone of note despite them having some good heavyweights that they could fight each other within that stable and this is the problem when you've got a whole bunch of heavyweights in the same stable not wanting to take risks only want to wanting to face a-side fighters for huge fights i mean otto valin if you'd have had a couple of top 20 or top 30 level of opponents in recent years you would have said you cannot deny this man an opportunity but he hasn't i mean last three fights journeyman halloween olguin Ryder booker camille sokolowski they're all you know decent sort of gatekeeper level journeymen but valin has passed all of those guys and he should be fighting much better opposition he's treading water and he's starting to sink and his stock in the heavyweight division is going nowhere how long can one man live off a punch opening a couple of cuts on tyson fury because without that his profile would be absolutely nowhere and fights like this don't necessarily enhance his stock his cause he is a good heavyweight but he's got some elements with his fighting similar to joseph parker i mean like i made that analogy before that comparison before i should say you know if you're going in there in fight week saying you really need the stoppage and you don't get it and then you've got a case that wasn't a super entertaining fight it's not like you dropped him three times had him on the canvas and it wasn't some rock em, sock em affair this was otto valin largely safety first only really put his foot down a bit in the last round you know ho-hum entertainment like i say headlining a club show in 2023 if he steps back and looks at his predicament maybe he should be questioning some of those around him not blaming the bigger promoters not blaming the bigger fighters who are the a-side fighters because at the moment what are you doing to really generate buzz and generate interest in those guys fighting you nothing nothing at all not a jot so Otto Valin has to you know ask his management you got to do better why aren't you doing better can you get me a meaningful fight and it doesn't just have to be the cash out payday which it seems all of these Salita heavyweights seem to be looking for I mean as it is it's seemingly um Jermaine Franklin and Otto Valin who are in the same stable seems they're being played off against each other for a potential fight with Anthony Joshua and it seems like Jermaine Franklin is seen as the guy that's the preferred opponent and that's probably because Otto Valin is I think a bit more skilled and obviously a southpaw Joshua's seen that look in his two most recent fights and lost franklin not as good a mover and you know he's going to be a much more static target for joshua to tee off on so there are a, a coalescing of factors that it's not great news for otto valin at the moment i mean i'm sure at some point someone's going to give him a fight but in the meantime he's got to be doing something to build his own stock and that doesn't mean just treading water maintaining rankings hoping someone will eventually go you okay well, we'll fight you do something to make it so they have to fight in eliminators prove to boxing fans you deserve a shot not just because you say you want a shot and that's enough for us to to go okay well you deserve one because at the moment what's he really done tell me that what's he really done drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out